Good morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from Proverbs chapter 8, verse 27 through 29. The Bible says, When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Today's study continues in Solomon's oracle to his son. This performance has been playing out before our eyes. Today we continue to witness the climax of the noble lady's wisdom. This outline gives us a visualization for where we are working in the larger oracle. In earlier episodes, we heard from Lady Wisdom in her first appeal. Today, we are working on the second appeal of Wisdom, the fifth strophe. This fifth strophe can be nicely divided into three parts. In our previous episode, we took a systematic look at the entire text and then studied Part A, the creation of Wisdom. Today, we will examine Part B, Wisdom's involvement in the creation. There are two characters discussed in this text. Character number one is the Lord, Yahweh, the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, described by John as the Logos. The relevant words in the text are highlighted in blue on your screen. Character number two is Lady Wisdom herself, the specific kind of wisdom Solomon is addressing in this oracle. The relevant words are highlighted in yellow on your screen. Each phrase of this text includes the inferred statement by Lady Wisdom, I was there. She enumerates some of the most amazing feats of creation, attributes the action to the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, then describes herself as a participant in the event. These six items of the created order can be nicely grouped into two sets of three. The first of these, the making of the heavens. The second, the placing of restraints over the power of the sea. This follows the model set forth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. This carries two implications. First, if wisdom had a part in these two awesome works of Yahweh, surely she should be present if human endeavors are to succeed. Second, if the very universe is made in accordance with the principles of wisdom, it is folly for anyone to live contrary to those principles. Take note that each of the action verbs assigned to the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ are limiting in nature. He is said to establish, draw, make firm, assign, and mark out. Each of these terms denote limitation, control, holding back the chaos. Each of the created elements selected by Lady Wisdom are things that the Hebrew mind associated with potential chaos. For each of these limiting actions, Wisdom says she was there. She was the intellectual creative force that Yahweh used to set boundaries upon the created order and thereby control the chaos. Inferred in this claim is this. If Wisdom can control the chaos of the natural order, what can she do for the chaos in your life? First, she says, I was there when he established the heavens. The Hebrew celestial point of view includes seven levels of heaven. The New Testament authors appear to embrace at least three of these. Lady Wisdom opens with her strongest salvo. The created order includes the heavenly realms. The exact count and nature debated by many Regardless of the details, the boundaries of these heavens were established by the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ and created wisdom was a participant. Whether describing the gravitational balance that holds the galaxies of the universe, the combination of centrifugal forces and gravity that make the solar systems work, or the established boundaries for the angelic creation that exist in parallel to the physical creation, see Colossians 1 verse 16, all the created boundaries of the heavens were accomplished by the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ with the created force of wisdom as his primary tool. Inferred in this claim is this, if wisdom can bring balance to the widest reaches of the created order, both physical and spiritual, what can she do to bring balance to your life? Next she says, I was there when he drew a circle upon the face of the deep. We can read the word circle as compass, Face of the deep to the Hebrew mind is the surface of the ocean. If you will notice, the first three created elements work from top down, from the highest levels of the heavens, previous phrase, to the force that contains the ocean, our current phrase, to the clouds in our skies, our next phrase. There is obviously connectivity between these three phrases. 
There are many things to consider when attempting to understand the idea of Yahweh establishing a circuit on the surface of the oceans. Homer speaks of this concept in both the Iliad and the Odyssey. Biblical authors such as Job and Isaiah include this imagery. The Septuagint translation is informative regarding this phrase also. It is difficult for our modern mind to conceive of the universe the way those of antiquity did. The best way to describe this concept for us would be to think of this as the engine that powers our planet, what we call the hydronic cycle. The hydronic cycle is the atmospheric counterbalance to the oceans. The oceans make up roughly 70% of the Earth's surface. Without the offsetting power of the circle that has been drawn on the face of the ocean, our planet would not survive. The exterior forces upon our planet, such as the sun, ice comets, and space dust, provide the counterbalance to the power of the great oceans of the earth. Wisdom was the tool that the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ deployed when creating this mighty engine that powers and sustains our planet. Inferred in this claim is this, if wisdom can calm the storms of our atmosphere, what kind of peace can she bring to your life? Next, she says, I was there when he made firm the skies above. This is connected to the statement Genesis 1 verse 7, Job 26 verse 8 regarding the firmament above the heavens. The ancient world viewed the antediluvian earth as having a large body of water surrounding it above the skies, if you will. They believed the flood was in part a release of these waters as well as an eruption of the waters from the depths of the earth. Scientifically speaking, a series of ice comets striking the earth along with the resulting catastrophic sloshing of the oceans, rearrangement of land mass, and rapid condensation of atmospheric water vapor would be consistent with this description by the ancients. According to Ed Mathez with the American Museum of Natural History, if all the ice on earth melted and all water vapor condensed, the ocean levels would only rise about 230 feet, leaving much of the land mass still exposed. On the other hand, even the highest mountains on our earth show fossil evidence of having at one time been underwater. One must admit the physical evidence of today's earth is somewhat unclear. The only reasonable explanation relates to some kind of global cataclysmic disaster, or several of them, that changed the earth in ways the current physical evidence would be strained to reveal. Wisdom was the tool that Yahweh used in setting these limitations on catastrophe. He unleashed catastrophe in the great flood, then restrained it with the return of the dove. Inferred in this claim is this. If wisdom can resolve the catastrophes that strike our planet, what can she do for the catastrophes in your life? Next, she says, I was there when he established the fountains of the deep. With this phrase, we begin the reverse order of our created elements. The first three created elements work from the top down. These three phrases will work, if you will, from the lowest levels of the earth, foundations of the deep or depths of the oceans, to the boundaries of the ocean, to the roots upon which the mountains rest. As with previous phrases, this is connected to the statements in Genesis 7 verse 11 and Job 38 verse 16 regarding the great flood. The Hebrew phrase indicates it should be understood with duplicity. The Septuagint translation reflects this by saying Yahweh established the fountains of the deep as in creation, released them as in the flood, and secured them as in the receding of the flood waters. The Hebrew mind saw the eruption of the flood water from the deep as a release of chaos and destruction. Wisdom was the power of natural science that Yahweh used to create, erupt, and secure the powers that lay deep within the earth's surface. Inferred in this claim is this, if wisdom can control the eruptions of destruction in this universe, what destructive forces can she remove from your life? Next, she says, I was there when he assigned to the sea its limits so that the waters might not transgress his command. As with the other phrases, this language is not uncommon in scripture. It is inferred in the Genesis creation account mentioned in Job 28 verse 26, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 22, and Job 38, verse 8. Imagine an ancient Hebrew citizen standing on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea, the power of the waves crashing into the shore, the awareness that enemy ships from Kittim and Tarshish attack from this body of water. Only Solomon, in his great wisdom, was ever able to launch an effective navy, 1 Kings 9, 26, against these foreign salvos. Imagine 
as they think of their countrymen that launched out into the deep just to never return. Think about the great Leviathan sea monster folklore that was used by the prophets to describe Satan himself. The ocean represented to them one of their greatest fears. Yahweh put a fence around the ocean, so to speak, using the power of wisdom. Inferred in this claim is this. If wisdom can imprison the greatest powers of the planet that cause us to tremble, what limitations can wisdom impose upon the fears in your life? Finally, she says, I was there when he marked out the foundations of the earth. In Hebrew thought, the depths of the ocean held in common the foundations of the mountains. This is reflected in the wording of Job chapter 38, verse 4 through 11, where the line stretched on the oceans is set parallel to the cornerstone of the foundations. It is as if the mountains have roots that reach all the way to the bottom of the ocean. This is the reality of our planet. The great continental shelves upon which our land masses rest are rooted at the depths of the ocean with great chasms separating each. The very roots of the earth rest upon the power of wisdom used by Yahweh in creation. Inferred in this claim is this. If earth itself rests upon the roots of wisdom, what foundation will wisdom bring to your day? Friend, join us for the next episode of Begin in the Word, where we will see that wisdom rejoices on our behalf at the great wonders of creation. Thanks for joining us today on Begin in the Word. I hope as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God.